Hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Katundu Masiku. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow in the Industrial and Systems Engineering Department, uh, working on the Net Zero Freight uh, project. Um, I'm happy to be here to share with you some insights on uh, the work that uh, we're currently doing. Um, and today I'm sharing with you the role of hydrogen in the decarbonization of the transport sector in USA. So to kickstart, uh, I would like to first of all just uh, give an overview of where we stand uh, from an international perspective. So from the international point of view, uh, the International Energy Agency uh, projects that uh, for global decarbonization to be achieved, at least 13% of uh, the required energy should come from uh, hydrogen. So this gives an opportunity not only to USA, but to all countries in the world to participate and contribute towards that 13%. So one property that makes hydrogen a very good energy carrier compared to the conventional fuels is that hydrogen uh, has got a very high uh, energy density. Uh, in terms of uh, mass content, uh, kilowatts per kg, I think it's three times uh, higher than conventional fuels, um, which can translate into several other advantages that can be discussed. Um, my work as a postdoctoral research fellow focuses uh, on clean energy and technology migration, uh, clean technology migration uh, to sustainable ones. Um, it also looks at uh, uh, developing sustainable pathways and resilient uh, pathways that will help with the decarbonization of uh, the transport sector. So of special attention is the transport sector. And the reason for uh, us focusing on the transport sector is because 30% uh, of the greenhouse gases uh, in USA come from the transport sector. So it may also interest you that out of that 30%, uh, 80% uh, of those emissions are attributed to uh, medium uh, to heavy duty trucks. So those are the, uh, I would call them the major culprits. So that is why in the net zero freight uh, program, we're focusing more on the finding a solution uh, in the medium to heavy duty trucks. Because once that is done, the other 20% is a bit easy to resolve. So if we look at it from uh, the context of the transport sector, hydrogen plays a pivotal role uh, in the decarbonization because firstly, it can um, be used uh, to power up uh, fuel cell uh, uh, electric vehicles. Um, it can also be used as a fuel for heavy duty trucks. Um, it can also be used as a fuel in the aviation and in the marine uh, industry. So, which means it can be used as a fuel for airplanes and also shipping vessels. However, while uh, hydrogen presents uh, all these great opportunities, it also comes with some challenges. So some of the challenges, especially around uh, infrastructure, is that Hydrogen um, has got, currently there's no uh, infrastructure uh, for the hydrogen production. There is no infrastructure for the hydrogen distribution. And there's no infrastructure for the hydrogen uh, storage. We all know hydrogen is a very uh, volatile uh, substance that requires uh, to be handled with a lot of care. So. There are also some other challenges, uh, secondary challenges like uh, 
non-availability of uh, 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 end user equipment, but those can be uh, sorted out later. But these are the key uh, uh, ones that have to be addressed. Um, prior to joining Georgia Tech, I worked uh, in Southern Africa uh, as a uh, renewable energy expert there, and we implemented some projects. Um, some of the projects implemented include the H2 Atlas, which is uh, an atlas that shows the potential of green hydrogen in the whole Southern Africa. And then um, I also participated in uh, projects uh, on the uh, transport sector, which involved um, retrofitting um, a locomotive and also a tugboat from being powered uh, by diesel to uh, green hydrogen, and also one uh, involving desalination of uh, uh, seawater for hydrogen production. But what I noticed was that uh, during my uh, work there was that Africa faces uh, slightly different issues or challenges, uh, especially around uh, policies. Uh, there is no technical know-how as well as skills for hydrogen production and obviously lack of uh, funding. But these are different from uh, the challenges that are faced here in USA. That is why, uh, despite all these opportunities and challenges uh, that I've talked about, uh, I would like to urge uh, all colleagues in the academia, uh, uh, industrial, uh, in the private sector, uh, industrial partners, uh, that we have to work together. Uh, our department is welcome for innovative ideas uh, so that we can try to improve and see to it um, that uh, we make hydrogen, the decarbonization uh, fuel that is required uh, for uh, uh, transitioning uh, or decarbonizing the transport sector by the year 2050 in USA. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.